Hey everyone, welcome back to Gadgets Pod. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned tinkerer, setting up and accessing your Raspberry Pi is the first step to unlocking its full potential. But with so many models and methods out there, it can feel a bit overwhelming. That's why, in today's video, we're going to cover methods to connect and access your Raspberry Pi. Whether you're using a wired connection, Wi-Fi, or even a headless setup, to unlock its potential, you need to connect. How? No matter which Raspberry Pi model you own, whether it's the latest Raspberry Pi 5, the compact Raspberry Pi Zero, or an older version, we've got you covered. By the end of this video, you'll be able to connect and access your Raspberry Pi with confidence, no matter your setup. So, grab your Pi, your cables, and let's dive in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our Raspberry Pi tutorials. Let's get started. First, we'll go through pre-configuration method to set up access for your Raspberry Pi. These method will help you set up your Raspberry Pi before even booting it for the first time. Using the Raspberry Pi Imager's advanced options, we'll walk you through each step in detail. So even if you're new to this, you can follow along easily. Let's get started. First, let's talk about the Raspberry Pi Imager's advanced options. This is the easiest and most beginner-friendly way to pre-configure your Raspberry Pi. You can set up things like Wi-Fi, SSH, and locale settings during the OS installation process. Let me show you how. Before we begin, make sure you have the Raspberry Pi Imager installed on your computer. Head over to the official Raspberry Pi website at raspberrypi.com. Go to the software section and find the Raspberry Pi Imager. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, so download the version that matches your operating system. Once the download is complete, Open the installer and follow the on-screen instructions to install the imager on your computer. It's a straightforward process. Just a few clicks and you're done. Launch the Raspberry Pi imager. First, click on Choose Device to select the model of your Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4, for example. Next, click on Choose OS to view the list of available operating systems. For beginners, I recommend starting with Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit though you can pick any OS that fits your project needs. Insert the SD card you want to write the OS onto into your computer using an SD card reader. Once done, click on Choose Storage and select the SD card you want to use. Ensure that the SD card is properly inserted and be sure to double check that you've selected the correct drive as this step will erase all data on the SD card. Before you click write, instead of immediately flashing the OS, press Ctrl plus Shift plus X to open the Advanced Options menu. This hidden feature in Raspberry Pi Imager lets you pre-configure essential settings for your Raspberry Pi. Here's where the magic happens. Within the Advanced Options menu, under the General tab, you can set the host name, set username and password, configure Wi-Fi credentials, and adjust settings like your time zone and keyboard layout. Switch to the Services tab to enable SSH with password authentication. Once you've entered all the necessary details, click Save, then write to flash the OS onto your SD card. And that's it. After writing the OS, eject the SD card and insert it into your Raspberry Pi slot. When you power up your Raspberry Pi for the first time, you'll notice that it's already set up for immediate use. It will automatically connect to your pre-configured Wi-Fi network, have SSH enabled for remote access, and all your locale settings will be in place. This means you can start using your Raspberry Pi right away without having to go through any additional setup steps. Now that your Pi is set up, let's dive into how you can access it remotely using SSH for command line access and VNC for a graphical desktop experience. First, let's talk about SSH Secure Shell. SSH allows you to access your Raspberry Pi's command line from another computer over the network. This is perfect for running commands, managing files, or configuring your Pi without needing a monitor or keyboard attached to it. To connect via SSH, you'll need your Raspberry Pi's IP address. If you configured Wi-Fi using the Raspberry Pi Imager's advanced options, your Pi should already be connected to your network. If not, you can connect it to the local network using an Ethernet cable. You can find its IP address by logging into your router and checking the list of connected devices. Use an IP Finder tool or log into your router to locate your device. Look for a device named Raspberry Pi or the host name you set during pre-configuration. 
An easy way to find the IP address is by using the host name you set for your Raspberry Pi during the Imager's advanced settings. Open Command Prompt or PowerShell on Windows or the built-in terminal on Mac OS or Linux and type ping space Raspberry Pi dot local and press enter. Replace Raspberry Pi with your chosen host name. In my setup, I assigned Raspberry Pi as the host name using the Imager's advanced options. After you've obtained the IP address, open a terminal on your computer and type SSH Pi and followed by IP address of Raspberry Pi. Here, Pi is the username you set using Raspberry Pi Imager's advanced options. Press enter and when prompted, enter your password. That's it. You're now connected to your Raspberry Pi via SSH, which lets you run commands, update your system, or configure your Pi, all from your computer. Now let's talk about VNC, Virtual Network Computing. VNC allows you to access your Raspberry Pi's graphical desktop remotely. This is great if you need to use apps with a GUI or prefer a visual interface over the command line. Now we will set up the VNC Connect on Raspberry Pi. Step one, update your Raspberry Pi. Before getting started, it's best to refresh your system packages. Open your terminal or connect via SSH and run the following commands. sudo apt-get update, sudo apt-get upgrade. This ensures your Raspberry Pi is fully updated before you activate any new services. Step two, enable VNC on your Raspberry Pi. Next, make sure the VNC service is turned on. If you're already connected via SSH, simply execute sudo raspy config. A configuration tool window will open. Within the configuration tool, navigate to the interface options section, select VNC, and choose to enable it. Step three, install VNC viewer on your computer. Next, head to the official RealVNC website, realvnc.com, to download and install VNC Viewer on your computer. This application is available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Step four, connect to your Raspberry Pi. Open VNC Viewer and type your Raspberry Pi's IP address into the address bar. Click connect and you'll be asked to enter your username and password. Use the credentials configured during setup. In just a few moments, you'll be connected to your Raspberry Pi's graphical desktop, ready for you to use as if you were sitting right in front of it. Let's do a quick recap of what we've covered. SSH. This lets you remotely access your Raspberry Pi's command line via your terminal. VNC. With VNC Viewer, you can control your Pi's graphical desktop as if you were right in front of it. Both methods are extremely powerful, and thanks to pre-configuring your Pi with the Raspberry Pi Imager's advanced options, you're all set to use them. Next, we will be setting up your Raspberry Pi for direct physical access, allowing you to work on it without the need for remote connections. Step one, insert the SD card. Place your pre-configured SD card into the Raspberry Pi slot, as it holds the operating system and necessary files. Step two, connect the monitor. Attach your monitor via an HDMI cable or a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter for Pi 4 and newer to display the visual output. Step three, attach the keyboard and mouse. Plug your USB keyboard and mouse into the available ports so you can navigate and control your Pi. Step four, power up the Raspberry Pi. Connect the power supply to your Raspberry Pi and watch the boot sequence lead you to the desktop environment. Step five, Raspberry Pi configuration settings. Now let's dive into the Raspberry Pi configuration settings. First, click on the main menu by selecting the Raspberry icon in the top left corner, then go to preferences and choose Raspberry Pi configuration. Once the tool opens, you'll notice several tabs, system, display, interfaces, performance, and localization. In the System tab, you can update your login password, change your Raspberry Pi's host name, and decide whether it boots into the command line or the desktop. You can also enable auto login, set the Pi to wait for a network connection before booting, and disable the splash screen for a cleaner startup. Switching over to the Display tab, you can modify how your visual output appears. You have the option to enable overscan to add a border around your screen if anything gets cut off, 
adjust pixel doubling for clarity, manage screen blanking, and set a headless resolution if you're running your Pi without a monitor. Next, the Interfaces tab lets you quickly enable or disable features like SSH, VNC, and various hardware interfaces such as SPI and I2C, depending on your project needs. The Performance tab offers options for overlay file system to enable or disable a read-only file system. You can also control case fan by selecting the GPIO pin and select at which temperature it should come on. Additionally, in the Localization tab, you have options to set your locale by choosing the language, country, and character set. You can also set your time zone, select the appropriate keyboard layout, and make sure you've set the correct Wi-Fi country to meet local regulations. Once you've made your changes in the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, you're ready to enjoy a fully personalized system. Step six, enabling Wi-Fi. Now that we're done with the configuration window, it's time to get online. Start by clicking the Wi-Fi icon in the top right corner of your desktop. From the drop-down menu, choose your desired network and enter the pre-shared key or passphrase when prompted. Remember, if you prefer a wired connection, you can also use an Ethernet cable to connect your Raspberry Pi to the internet. That concludes our direct physical access setup. This method is perfect for initial configuration, troubleshooting, or if you enjoy a hands-on experience. With your Raspberry Pi now operating as a full desktop, you can easily connect to it either locally or remotely via SSH or VNC. Earlier in this video, we demonstrated how to access your Raspberry Pi using both SSH and VNC. In our previous segment, we set up our Raspberry Pi using the imager to configure VNC and SSH. Now, we're taking it one step further with Raspberry Pi Connect, a new beta feature that lets you securely access your Pi from anywhere in the world using just your browser. Raspberry Pi Connect provides an encrypted, secure connection between your Raspberry Pi and your browser. Whether it's accessing a full desktop session or simply running a remote shell, Connect does it all. And if a direct connection can't be established, it smartly falls back to a relay server while keeping your metadata safe. Remember, to use Connect, your Raspberry Pi must run Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm or later. Let's get started with the installation. First, open a terminal on your Raspberry Pi and update your system with these commands. sudo apt update, sudo apt full upgrade. If you had already run this command following this video, you can skip this step. Now, let's install Raspberry Pi Connect. You can do this by entering one of the following commands. sudo apt install RPI Connect Lite or sudo apt install RPI Connect. The key difference between the two is that the Lite version does not include the screen sharing feature. Now that Connect is installed, you need to link your Raspberry Pi to your Raspberry Pi account. If you don't already have an account, follow these steps. Open on your computer raspberrypi.com slash software slash connect. Click the connect icon or select sign in from the drop down menu. This will automatically open your browser and take you to the Raspberry Pi ID service. Create an account. If you're new, click on create an account for free. Follow the on screen instructions to provide the necessary details and register your account. After creating an account on Raspberry Pi Connect, it's time to sign in and set up your device. To begin, open Raspberry Pi Terminal and enter the command RPI Connect on, or simply click the Connect icon in the menu bar and select Turn on Raspberry Pi Connect. Next, sign in using your Raspberry Pi Connect account. Once signed in, you'll be prompted to assign a unique name to your Raspberry Pi for easy identification. Choose a name that makes it simple to recognize your device. After linking your device, you'll receive an email confirming that your Raspberry Pi is successfully connected to your account. And that's it. Your Raspberry Pi is now ready to be accessed and managed remotely with Raspberry Pi Connect. With your device linked, accessing it remotely is just a click away. Let's explore the two main access options, screen sharing or graphical desktop access. Open your browser and visit connect.raspberrypi.com on any computer. After signing in, you'll see a list of your linked devices. Devices available for screen sharing display a gray badge. If the screen share option is missing due to the light version, you can enable it manually. Open the Raspberry Pi terminal and enter the following command. RPI Connect VNC on. This will activate the VNC server, 
allowing you to remotely access your Raspberry Pi screen. Click Connect via next to the desired device and choose Screen Sharing. A new browser window will open, displaying your Raspberry Pi's desktop. Remote Shell Command Line Access Alternatively, for a command line interface, select Remote Shell from the dashboard. This opens a shell session in your browser, allowing you to execute commands just like you would with SSH. Managing your connection is straightforward. To stop any session, click the Disconnect button or type Exit in your remote shell. Need to disable a feature? You can easily toggle screen sharing or remote shell access from the Connect menu or via commands such as RPI Connect VNC off to disable screen sharing. RPI Connect shell off to disables remote shell. For headless setups, we recommend enabling user lingering so your device remains accessible even after a reboot. Simply run Logic Tool Enable Linger. With these steps, you now have the tools to securely access your Raspberry Pi's desktop and shell from anywhere in the world. We hope you enjoy the enhanced flexibility and convenience this feature brings to your projects. In this video, we covered three ways to connect to your Raspberry Pi, pre-configuring with Imager, direct physical access, and remote access via SSH slash VNC. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced user, these methods ensure you can set up and manage your Pi just the way you want. If you enjoyed this guide, please like, subscribe, and leave your feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching.